Alright, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Okay, sorry for the delay. Eh. Alright, so for today, uh, as I said, eh, I will uh, explain a bit detail. Okay, explain a bit detail about topic number two. Okay, topic number two, which is financial statements and ratio analysis. Right. So as I mentioned during our first session uh, last week. This topic number two is important because this will be your group assignment. Okay, topic number two will be your group assignment. And I believe the coordinator already uploaded uh, the instruction. Okay, whereby you just go to my guru and check out the instruction for the for the assignment. Okay, so as I mentioned during our so-called uh, in the group, I think I mentioned about, uh, I asked you to see the videos okay so for those yang belum tengok the videos please do so uh, because for today i just try to summarize uh, the topic and also to exactly show a bit how to to analyze basically okay how to make use the information and how we from the information we analyze we calculate the ratios and finally we make comparison okay we make comparison so let me share with you wow Right, so this would be the topic, yeah, topic number two. Okay, so there are two parts I can say. The first two bullets here is the uh, financial statement itself. Okay, there are two documents that we are going to use uh, for our analysis, which is known as the balance sheet and the income statement. Again, uh, if you go to the playlist of my channel though, for TFM 3023, you're going to see that this topic number two have two parts, part one and part two. Okay, so please watch both videos for further understanding. Okay, as I said, for this session today, I will try to summarize okay, within one hour or so only, so that you can basically see yourself how it works. But in terms of the details of it, please review back the videos. Okay. So the two documents or the two statements that we are going to use are called the balance sheets and also the income statement, right? And okay, in. okay, give me one second, yeah. Um. So there are some of your friends here, other problems, okay, for those who texted me, are you guys okay, dah join ke belum? Just started, okay, let me try. Okay, at least there are two of your friends here, had a problem, not join. So you guys okay, dengar tak? Yeah, doctor. Okay, good. My doctor. All right, thanks. So for those young, maybe the problem later on again, kindly revisit the videos. No worries. Right. So once you have familiar with the statements, okay, for this time around, into accounts, maybe you can prepare how to do the accounts, how to do the statements. But for finance, you tak perlu risau untuk buat statement sebab statements usually given or you can find it online. Okay, if you have to do your assignments later on, you need to decide on your company and all of the documents are already online here. Okay, you don't have to prepare. The ones that you need to focus more are this one, the, the ratios and the analysis part, okay, which is the second part lah, yang 2.3 and 2.4. Okay, so... Yeah, so that's the two parts uh, in, in general what the topic is all about, okay? So I'm going to skip this one, cuma important parts. And I'll tell you, the first document is the balance sheet. And you need to remember this equation, okay? Whereby we have assets, number one. And it balanced by liabilities plus equity, okay? So this is the equation. 
right? And again, nanti you tengok balik the video kalau you tak tengok lagi. Under assets, we have two different uh, types of assets. We have the current assets. Okay, under assets, eh? Then we have uh, the panggil the fixed asset. Okay, current and fixed. So current ni is assets that can be converted into cash within one year. So whichever assets takes longer time, they masuk dalam fixed assets. Okay, the type nanti you tengok dalam video yang sebelum ni. Okay, so that's assets. We have two types of assets. Current asset, fixed assets. And for liabilities, similarly, they have current liabilities. And also they have long term. Okay, long term liabilities. Similarly, current here means obligations that you need to pay within one year, within 12 months. Okay, yeah, that's why you current liabilities, tanggungan yang you have to pay within one year. For long term liabilities, these are obligations ataupun hutang, debts that you have to pay more ataupun beyond one year. Okay, that's why we call them long term liabilities. Right, and for equity, it only has equity. Equity, saja. We don't have very special, uh, specialized at one categories of equity. So, in terms of uh, common stocks, ke, preferred stocks, ke, semua tu masuk dalam equity lah. Okay, so technically we have five different categories here: two for assets, two for liabilities, and one for for equity. Right, so that's balance sheet. So the balance sheet basically will give you a snapshot of the company's Financial, okay, financial information, okay, with regards to assets, liabilities, and also equity, okay. So that's our first document and how it looks like, okay. Detail that I can skip it. So kalau dalam soalan exam, for example, dia akan nampak macam ni. It's in the form of T account. Macam T ni kan. So with the one line in the center, okay. So they have assets on one side, and then liabilities on top on the right hand side and common equity and equity on the bottom right side and these two values total assets must be equivalent to total liabilities and equity that's why the equation that I mentioned okay so that's balance sheet if you you see this you're going to see this only in exam ataupun in tests ataupun in exercises maybe okay but if you look in the actual annual reports of company okay you will not see this format Okay, so the format would be something like this. Okay, something like this. Uh, still, they will segregate between assets one side and then liabilities and equity on the other side. Cuma in this case, the positioning instead of left and right, tadi kan, uh, ataupun horizontal, this is more on a vertical format. Vertical means assets on top and then liabilities and equity at the bottom. Okay, but still there'll be segregation basically lah. If I draw a line here, lah, this is the segregation. Assets on top, then liabilities one side, then equity on the other. So kalau I label tadi, number one here, number two liabilities, number three equity macam tu. Okay, so one equals to two plus three again, formula dia. Right, and as you can see here, this value, 10, 9, 1, 6 ni, Okay, sama dengan 10916 at the bottom. Okay, so this is how your balance sheet looks like in real companies. Okay, and most of the time, the balance sheet also known as this statement, statements of financial position. Okay, statements of financial position. Okay, so later on, like I said, when you review the question, okay, question for for your assignment nanti eh. So you need to download, uh, you need to download the annual reports and obviously bila nak buat balance sheet tu ataupun nak cari balance sheet, find this statement of financial position whereby you can see the assets, liabilities and equity. And in annual reports, they will always give you two years statement. Okay, the current year and then they, they will provide with you the previous year juga. So for example, if you download annual report for 2020, Okay, but 2021 tak habis lagi kan, so therefore we don't have 2021 punya reports yet. But for 2020, maybe ada. Okay, if you download 2020 punya documents, in the annual reports, they will give you 2020 punya information, data, 
and they will give you 2019 data as well. So two years statement kat dalam tu. And on top of that, uh, macam ni lah dia ada, in this case, they give you 2010 and 2009. Okay, and on top of that, they have one for group. And since this is a bank, eh, so they use bank lah. Okay, but sometimes, kalau non-bank, they will put here company. Okay, company. So you're going to have group one side and then company on the other. So which one to use? Okay, always use the group one. Okay, for your analysis later on, eh, use the group when information because most of information, they are come park under group. So to make it consistent, just use group. Okay, remember eh, when you do your uh, analysis for your group assignments, use the group information. Okay, some of the information may be same one between the two, tapi yeah, use the group because there are some items only uh, uh, available at group level, not at the bank level. So therefore, we're going to use uh, the one in the group. Lah. Okay, so that's uh, statement of financial position ataupun the balance sheets. Let's move on to the second document, the income statement. So income statement very straightforward. Okay, this is where we want to see uh, the flows of money coming in and coming out. Okay, so you're going to see for income statement, they will start with revenues or income, right? Income, and they will deduct all the expenses. Okay, and these expenses, including sakat and tax. Okay, they're going to uh, deduct all the, the expenses, uh, operating expenses and everything uh, related to the company though, including zakat and tax. And finally, they will get whether profit or loss. Okay, profit or loss. So this income statement will really indicates whether the company uh, generated profit or suffer losses for the year. Okay, they must be the same year as our balance sheet. Okay, so yeah, in terms of the looks of the statement, eh, again, if we look from exam point of view, they are going to look like Okay, but similarly, if we look in the real example, okay, the format something like this. They still use the word income statements. However, uh, bear in mind, sometimes they might use the term statement of financial performance. Remember tadi, for balance sheet, they use statement of financial position. Okay, for income statement, it's also known as statement of financial performance. Okay, and information for group and company is the same. Two years information. It starts with revenue on top. Okay, sampai the total net income. And then all the expenses. Sampai zakat and tax and for this company they suffer losses okay they suffer losses for the year okay and on top of that they give you some other information related to dividend so these are dividend okay in terms of uh, the values but in this case since the company lost and so they don't have dividend but usually after the loss or the profit of the company, the bottom part usually relates to the dividend payments and also the number of shareholders. Okay. So this is income statements. Okay. So therefore, these two documents, like I said, will be our source of data, source of reference for our analysis. So you don't have to worry about how to make these documents or how to prepare these statements because macam mana nak buat statements ni, you learn in accounts. Okay, accounting. Okay, but for our case, uh, for financial management, we don't prepare this. We can download this uh, from the website here, yeah, from the from the annual reports. And what really important is actually how to to read number one. Number two is how to analyze. Okay, data dah ada, but what we need to do with the information. Okay, so this is the next part. The ratios. Okay, so the the analysis that we're gonna do is called the ratio analysis. Okay, and here you will see we have five different categories of financial ratios. Okay, number one is called 
liquidity ratio. Okay, liquidity ratio. Number two, we have uh, leverage ratio. Okay. Leverage ni, in other words, relates with debts, utang, liabilities. Okay. Number three, um, activity. Okay, activity ratio. The what we call the pro, basically the operations of the company, whether they are effective or not. I want to see how efficient and effective the company managing their resources to generate sales. Okay, they have a lot of resources. A lot of resources need in the form of asset. Like asset to consider resources there. So how good they manage their resources in order to generate income for the company. So we can measure this using activity ratios. Number four, uh, we have profitability. Okay, profitability. So profitability, very straightforward. We want to see how profitable the company, right? How good they generate profits for the company. Okay, so this four memang confirm uh, we have we can calculate lah for any type of company, but for the fifth ratio, the fifth category, eh, I put a star here. This fifth category only applicable for companies traded in the stock market. Okay, because this fifth kita panggil dia, the market ratio. Okay, and why I put a star again? Because as I mentioned, only share ataupun companies traded in stock market okay that we can use for market ratio because there are some information in the ratio uh it's beyond okay beyond the statement of financial position the balance sheets and also the income statement there are some other information that we need to generate but we need to not generate lah. we need to find beyond the two documents i mentioned before so you might find it uh, on the different website even and even in Busa Malaysia punya portal so maybe I'll share with you okay so you can go to Busa Malaysia okay you can go to Busa Malaysia this is uh, the way how you want to identify which companies that can use the fifth category of ratio okay those who are listed here only Okay, go to bursamalaysia.com. This will be our official website of Bursa Malaysia. And under market information here, okay, go to equities prices. Okay, under equities prices, there's a lot of information. Okay, but uh, the ones that concern us, because uh, they list them all. They list everything here, bottom here. Okay, but to select companies, for example, if you want to... Uh, choose companies for your uh, group project ataupun group assignment. You can go here. Okay, I, I repeat boleh eh. Under busamalaysia.com, go to market information, go to equities prices, and you will be here. Okay, and here you can refine your search. So, how to see the companies uh, related ataupun uh, force under which category. So, under market here, okay, there are a lot of markets. Go ataupun just focus on the main market okay go for the main markets and the next one you're going to see a lot of sectors okay macam macam sectors ada okay ada close any jangan ambil eh just start from construction ni construction consumer products energy and so on sampai lah at the end utilities and this will be the sector so for example let's say kita pergi consumer product and services and under this uh, sector consumer products and services we can select sub sector okay even further kita boleh categorize under sub sector so if you go to sub sector you can see a few more options kat sini right let's say we go for retailers okay retailers then you click search and they're gonna list all the companies okay all the companies under retailers and whoever companies appear in this session kat sini kat sini kalau kita tengok kan ada 13 eh 13 entries meaning there are 13 companies 
Okay, ataupun 13 holding companies. Right, some of them, memang you familiar lah, Parkson, uh, Tome, Yon, My News, Mr. DIY, Pokong, Padini, okay. Pamda pun ada, Taiwo, Amway and so on. Ini Petron, Petron dah sedang ni, Pendek ni. So these are the companies listed under consumer products, subcategory, retailers. And how to know whether they are per heart companies or not, ataupun listed. Usually by clicking, you can see here, the name of the company must be in Berhad, not Sendirian Berhad, eh? Berhad. So only these Berhad companies have the information for the market ratios, yang the fifth category ni. Okay, what kind of information? We need to know their share prices. We can uh, find information related to their number of shareholders. Okay, sebab so, kalau company ni Sendirian Berhad, they don't have that information and when they don't have for, uh, that information, we cannot calculate market ratio. Right? So therefore, uh, please, when you want to do your project assignment later, that's how you do it. From the Usama Malaysia, you list down, you, you narrow down from the category to subcategory. And to let you know now, lah, basically, uh, when you want to select for your own group project nanti, you cannot choose the same subcategory. So meaning in a, in a, in your class kan ada let's say orang 40 eh. Let's say we have 40 and then we have four members in the group. So we're going to have 10 groups. Okay, so these 10 groups cannot pick the same subcategory. Okay, because we have plenty We have plenty of companies kat sini ataupun categories. So, kalau ada satu, satu group yang dah pilih retailers, for example, and then they choose two. Sebab you need to choose two company je. Right? So, for example, one company pilih, I tak boleh sebut kan. Tak apalah, katalah you pilih Mr. DIY versus ataupun yang, yang relevant. I don't know, Kamda versus Paxson. Okay. So, obviously, different teams atau different groups cannot choose retailers anymore. You need to choose something yang lain lah. Automotive ke, consumer services ke, FMB ke, household or different category altogether. You pilih healthcare, lepas tu tengok satu kategori apa. Equipment ke, pharmaceutical ke. So you have a lot of options. So don't choose the same uh, sub-sector at least. Sector yang sama may be possible but not different sub-sector. Sub-sector must be different from one group to another. So how to how to book. Okay, so first come first services. So, siapa yang nak pilih group? Okay, prepare a document ataupun prepare a list and then pass around in the group. Then, siapa yang book first, nama dia appear kat situ lah. Alright, so that's the only thing I nak mention for, for, for time being. Okay, for with regards to group project. Okay, um, so the financial ratios are the lima category like so. PT, leverage, activity, profitability and the market ratios. And it, for every ratios, obviously they have more than one types of ratios. So for liquidity, we have three ratios, if I'm not mistaken. Leverage ratios, we have three different ratios juga. Activity, we have about five or six, I can't remember. The profitability, we have five or six ratios. Okay, market ratios also about five or six ratios. So when you combine all categories, you might have around 20 something ratios. Okay, 20 something ratios altogether. Okay, but which one to use? Okay, so for your group assignment, I think the question specify what, uh, which ratios to choose from. I'm not so sure. I think already saw that. Okay, just read the questions. So, kalau dia tak specify, use your understanding which ratios are really related with the question. Okay. <clears throat> And as I said, eh, I cannot go through every single ratio today because I, I shared already the videos from my previous session. Look for this topic number two, uh, topic number two videos, right? In my playlist too, in YouTube, there are two parts, part one and part two. So I need the topic, topic two ni for part one, topic two for part two. So there are two videos. I don't know how many hours in total, but yeah, there are two parts of videos. So please check out the videos in terms of the details. Okay, but here, as I said, 
I would like to summarize. Right, summarize, especially uh, talk about, let's say, the first ratio. Eh? The first category, we have liquidity. So, like I said, under liquidity, we have three different ratios. So, the notes, okay, the notes that I share with you, Ni, you will see for every ratio, okay, for every ratio, there will be some explanation what is the ratio is all about on top. And then, you're going to see the formula. Okay, so every ratio somewhere, there will be some explanation of the first section. And then they have the formula, the current ratio. For example, the first ratio, the very first ratio is called current ratio. The name of the ratio and also the formula. And this formula, this information, you can get either from uh, the balance sheets or the income statement. Okay, except for the fifth category. Like I said, eh, into fifth category, some information beyond the balance sheet and income statement. That's why uh, only applicable for those very hard companies. Sahaja. Anyway, after you have this formula, okay, and the information that you need in order to calculate, the third part in the in the explanation here yeah, is this one. <clears throat> this is the suggestion. Okay, suggestion to explain. Okay, so you can use this as your explanation. Okay, this is to explain what is the ratio is all about. What does it mean when you get a certain score? What the score means? <clears throat> and for this example, current ratio, the answer is in X. X ni bukan X, eh? this is in times. <clears throat> in times. So, how many times? Okay, so the higher the ratio reflect the ability of the company to pay short-term obligations on time. So, meaning the higher the ratio, the better. Lah, but the higher the ratio indicates they have more ability. To pay obligations. Okay, remember, eh, current asset represents assets that are liquid. Okay, and current liabilities indicates their obligations ataupun their debts that they need to pay within 12 months. But currently, short term, eh, they need to pay within 12 months. So here, current ratio wants to see whether they have enough assets to cover the liabilities. <clears throat> so that's why the ratio dalam ni dikata approximately 1.5. Okay, but in general terms, if the ratio is more than one, it indicates they have more assets as compared to the current liabilities. Okay, if the other way around, meaning if their liabilities is more, okay, obviously your score can be less than one. Okay, if your liabilities is bigger than your assets, obviously when you calculate, <clears throat> the score will be less than one. So less than one indicates that the company might have problems okay, to pay short-term obligations, especially during the short term period. Okay, so let's look at one example. Okay, I think I've shared this in your My Guru juga. I, I shared in My Guru in this topic when you slides. I, I usually I will put the exercise as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this as exercise to uh, explain how to actually calculate the ratios and how to explain them. Okay. One second. Eh? Right, so this is a question from Atapun for Sunrise Corporation. And there are two statements here. We have the statement of financial position, which is the balance sheet, and statement of financial performance, which is the income statements. Okay, I mentioned already, you don't have to you know, worry about how to create these statements because usually it will be given to you. <clears throat> okay, but you need to understand what are the items for each statements. Kalau you ingat tadi, under the balance sheets, we have assets on one side, yang ni. Then we have liabilities and equity on the right hand side. Okay. But if you recall juga tadi, like I mentioned, we have five different items under balance sheet. Two for assets, two for liabilities, and one for equity. And that is not uh, categorized in this question. They tak bagi you the categorization. 
So therefore, you need to categorize yourself. Untuk soalan macam lah, you have to categorize yourself. And if you recall tadi, when we talk about assets, the first category is called current assets. And if you look in the notes ada eh, uh, the details, what are considered under current assets and uh, fixed asset and whatnot. But here I would like to label them. Okay, for current assets, there are four different items under current asset here. Okay, current asset CA. Eh? We have cash, marketable securities, account receivable, and also inventories. Okay, this is under current assets. And net plus and equipment, this is our fixed asset. There's only one fixed asset. Okay, so total combined is 4 million ringgit for the assets. And for the right hand side, okay, we have account payable, accrued expenses, notes payable, and other current liabilities. And these four is fall under current liabilities. Okay, current liabilities. For long-term debt, this is our long-term liabilities. LTL, yeah, long-term liabilities. And for common shares and retained earnings, this is our equity. Okay, that's our equity. So that's our five different categories for the balance sheet. Right? And for income statement, you don't have to do anything. Lah. You just leave it as it is for income statement. Yeah? Account comes from the revenues, the sales, then all the expenses, including tax, and finally the earning after tax. So earning after tax is also known as net profit. Okay, net profit. 440,000 ringgit. That's the net profit of the company. Right? So now, if you recall, we have five different categories, but do we need to calculate all five categories? It all depends on the instruction or question. Okay, for this question, particular question for this Sunrise Corporation, the company, uh, the question asks you to calculate the relevant. Relevant meaning it's not all, only the relevant ones. So which are considered relevant? So at the bottom here, after the statement of financial uh, performance, we have eight different ratios mentioned here. Okay. From current ratio, sampai lah, times interest rate. Okay. And what are these figures? So these figures are representing the industry average ratios. Okay. When we do financial ratios, okay, we, we must compare our financial ratios against something, against another company at least, against another entity. Right. So that's why if you look from uh, your group presentation, ataupun group project, you need to choose two companies. Okay, as I said earlier, must be from the same industry. Must be from the same industry. And for this question, since we only have one company, Sunrise Corporation, so the question provide with a comparative punya ratios. So the comparative would be the industry average. So meaning this is the average ratios for the whole industry where the Sunrise Corporation uh, B lah. I'm not sure company ni relates dengan company apa. Tak mention kat sini eh. Doesn't matter. So meaning we know uh, this is the comparative figures. So we, we want to see whether Sunrise Corporation is performing better or worse as compared to the industry average. So kalau your group project, you want to see company A versus company B. Okay, which is better in terms of the ratios. Remember? When they good in one ratio, not necessarily the other ratio will be good for company yang sama. Okay, some ratios might be company A is better. Some might be company B is better. Okay, so that's the comparative we want to see. And remember, we have five different categories. So we can comment from the liquidity point of view. We can comment from the leverage point of view, the profitability, or even, I don't know, the activity, effectiveness, efficiency point of view as well. Okay. And for this question, we're just going to focus on these eight ratios. Okay, as I said, eh, from current ratio until times interest rate. Okay, and based on B, okay, the question asks you to analyze. So when we talk about analysis, okay, that's why under the notes, I have all of this suggestion. And you can use this as your analysis. 
you can use these words ataupun these statements to support your calculation. So for every ratio eh, you tengok kat bawah ni, every ratio ada some comments at the bottom tu. So you can use this as an analysis. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Uh, the current ratio ni eh. So current ratio formula dia is current assets divided by current liabilities. So I'm going to use this whiteboard and I'm going to put the question on the other side. Macam ni. Okay, so I will explain to you how the ratio, how to how to uh, basically process the ratios and also how to comment. Okay, I might not have time to explain all. Eh? We have eight ratios ni. I just uh, explain to you the process, the steps, and hopefully you can understand and replicate. Okay, replicate for other ratios. Okay, so this is for Sunrise. Eh? Sunrise operation. So the first ratio the person asks us to find is the current ratio. Okay, current ratio. And if you recall the formula, I just tunjuk tadi is current assets divided by current liabilities. Okay, current assets divided by current liabilities. So that's why I label this category ni tadi. Current assets, current liabilities because we, we need to calculate for this current ratio. So... What would be the figures? So for current assets, we have four items today. Okay, obviously when we talk about finance classes, you need calculators. Eh? So we have four different items under current assets. From cash, marketable securities, account receivable and inventories. So you need to add all four items. The values, eh? you add all four. So 30,000 plus 600,000 plus 830,000 plus 400,000. So we have... 1.86 million ringgit for our current assets. Okay, so how I get this 1860? I add all four items 30,000 plus 600 plus 830 plus 400,000. Okay, that's our current assets. And for current liabilities, on the right hand side here, we have also four items from account payable down until other current liabilities. So again, if you add all four, 460 plus 150 plus 270 and 200,000. So you have here 1.080,000, eh, million, eh? 1.08 million. Okay, 1.08 million. Okay, 1.08 million. So we have these two information. We can straight away calculate the ratio. So what you need to do, just divide lah, 1.86 million. Divide by 1.08 million. So here you get the ratio of 1.72. Here a bit. Times. Okay, 1.72 times. So what does it mean 1.72 times? Okay, for, for ratios, eh, for ratio analysis, the standalone information sometimes might not be very useful. We know it's 1.72 times, but is it good or is it bad? So every, uh, every industry might have different interpretation of these ratios. So that's why when we want to make it more meaningful, we have to compare this result against another entity, as I said. Can you compare? Right, and for this question, the comparative figure is this industry average. So the one yang diletak kat dalam ni, all the ratios, these are not the answers. Okay, this is just a comparative figure. So you can compare your own calculation against this industry average ratios. So in our case here for current ratio, eh, the company Sunrise Corporation has 1.72 times for the current ratio. And for the industry average, as you can see here, it's 2.0. Ataupun two times. And if you recall, uh, for the current ratio tadi, eh, I'll share with you this one. The higher the ratio reflects their ability to pay short-term obligation on time. So meaning the higher the ratio, meaning they have the higher ability. Okay, ataupun better ability to pay short-term obligations on time. So here, uh, wait, wait, wait. this one. Okay, so... If you want to comment, let's say lah nak comment eh, you're going to say Sunrise Corporation as, ok, 
Okay, so you can use the word better or worse. Okay, for comparative purposes, better or worse. So in this case, Sarah's corporation has better, again. Eh, sorry, it has worse. But the 1.72 is less than 2.0 again. So it has worse ability to pay short term obligations on time as compared to the industrial rich. Okay, so that's how we comment. So where I get this information from the one at the bottom here. So the keyword is uh, payment of short term obligations on time. So you can add, you can, uh, the one I underline it can be worse or it can be better. Lah. Okay, but in our case here, Sunrise Corporation has worse performance as compared to the industry average. So these are the two parts that you need to do for all relevant ratios. First is the calculations. Second is the analysis upon your comments. Okay, your comments. So you need to comment for all ratios you calculated. Okay, ada soalan tak? In terms of the process, how you derive the information, how you calculate, and finally, how to comment. Okay, that's the process for all relevant ratios. So remember, for this question, we have add eight different ratios. Okay, we have eight different ratios. So I just showed you number one. Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, maybe we quickly try second question lah, ataupun second ratio. The second ratio is quick, eh? Quick ratio. Okay, quick ratio ni. Okay, quick ratio. So for quick ratio, sometimes it's also known as acid test ratio. This is the other name for quick ratio. So formula there will be current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. So it's quite similar like current ratio, but we need to deduct inventory from the current assets. Because we know the current assets value the 1.8 million million. 1.86 million. Okay. And the current liability is 1.08 million. Therefore, okay, to calculate this quick ratio, we already have the information 1860. Okay, but we need to deduct the inventory. So our inventory is 400,000. So we have to deduct 400,000 from our current assets. And we're going to divide by same values 1.08 so berapa ni 860 sorry 1860 minus 400 divided by 1.08 so it's about 1.35 times okay 1.35 times so what does it mean by 1.35 times compare against the industry average so the industry average is 1.8 times so again, similar like current ratio, the quick ratio also shows that the company has worse performance as compared to the industry average. So what you need to write to comment, similar like before, Sunrise Corporation has worse ability to pay short-term obligations on time. Cuma you kena tambah sebab this is quick ratio uh, without relying on inventory. Okay, kalau tak ingat, you can go here. Command is ability to pay short-term obligation without relying on inventories. Okay, as compared to the industry average. Okay, that's how you comment. So meaning, performance-wise, uh, they have bad, uh, worse performance lah as compared to the industry average. Okay, when we talk about industry average, to make it clear to you, what does it mean by industry average? Industry average ni bukan satu entity, eh? it's just an average, number for average. So, for example, if you are looking from telco company, telco, eh, tele, tele, telecommunication, tele, telecommunications company, in Malaysia, we have, apa? we have Axiata for Cellcom, we have Maxis, we have BG, contohnya. so if you calculate one, katakanlah you are measuring uh, Maxis, for example, okay, so uh, we have uh, 
income statement balance sheet for Maxis. And the question bagi you industry average. So the industry average ni consists of all players. Maxis ada dalam tu, Cellcom. Apa lagi tadi? DG, U Mobile, I don't know. Apa lagi company-company telco yang lain lah. So then the average kan. Okay, so that's industry average. But you don't have to worry about to find this industry average. When you do your uh, group project, you don't need to find industry average. You just need to find two companies from the same industry. Example tadi lah, you just compare, compare katakan Maxis versus Cellcom. Uh, two similar companies from the same industry. Okay, so therefore you don't need industry average for comparative. You just compare performance of Maxis versus com, uh, performance of Cellcom contohnya. Okay, in terms of their ratios lah, tengok soalan. Okay, some, tengok dalam soalan lah, whether they ask you to find the current ratio, quick ratio and whatnot. Okay, one more. Katakan we measure for the third ratio here. We have ACP, eh? average. Average. Collection. Period. Okay, so this is related to collection. So when we talk about average collection period, this is where we want to see how quickly the company recover when they give out debt ataupun credit to customers. Okay, so obviously bila you bagi pinjam orang duit, the faster you recover, the better for you as a company. Sebab you don't pull ataupun you don't have problems with cash flows. Okay, so for ACP, formula dia adalah uh, account receivable. Okay, account receivable by sales times 360. Okay, so this would be the formula for ACP, average collection period. So where to get this information? The current receivable is in current assets. Okay, one of the items under current assets is the current receivable. So the value is 830,000. Okay, 830,000 is the current receivable. Sales here. Okay, from the income statement, sales there 7 million. So we divide by 7 million and you multiply with 360. Okay, bear in mind, eh, some ratios is in times, some ratios in days. Okay, in fact, satu ratio je yang in days, eh, which is ACP ni. And then uh, the rest will be in percentage. Okay, so whichever ratio in percentage, kindly multiply by 100 in order to get it in percentage. Because when you divide certain information, you will get 0 point something. So you just multiply with 100. So for every ratio yang in percentage, just bear with me. Check eh, contoh kat sini. Ha, contohnya macam debt to equity ni, the answer in percentage eh. I tak tulis sini darab 100 but you need to you, you need to multiply by 100 lah kat sini in order to get it in percentage. Okay, whenever you see this in percentage ni eh, you have to multiply, eh, sorry yeah, you have to multiply by 100. Okay. So, what will be the answer here? 830,000 divided by 7 million ringgit times 360. So, you get around 40, I round up lah sebab hari eh, because it's in days. It is 43 days. Okay, remember when we talk about collection, we want to collect as fast as possible. Kalau tadi ratio for current and quick, we want our ratio to be as high as possible again. For ACP, you want it to be as short as possible. So, 43 days versus, for the industry average, 40 days. Okay, so meaning the industry collect faster. Even in 3 days, yeah, but it's still considered faster as compared to the company. So, therefore, what you can comment, you can comment that uh, Sunrise uh, Corporation has a worse average collection period and requires longer time to recover Yeah. Yeah, account receivable. Okay, they not recover account receivable dia slightly longer. Ataupun dalam ni dia guna words have problems. Okay, have problems with collections. Okay, ACP. Indicate that has problem. Kalau dia punya ratio is higher, eh, meaning the number, uh, comparatively is higher than the industry average, indicate that might have a problems in collecting debts. Okay, their collections. So in our case here, the lower the ratio, the better with regards to ACP, average collection period. Okay.
and so on and so forth. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I also discussed this very same question dalam previous video yang I said I want you to to view. Okay, just go to the playlist. Sure ada tak ada. Okay, so go to the the playlist tu kan. If uh, nak tengok topik yang mana dekat dekat title memang tak tak indicate saya tapi go to the respective videos. Ni ada sort according to the topics. So the very first video ni memang for topic number one. For the second video, it's for topic number two eh. Financial statement and ratio analysis part one. So I have about two hours. Just part one je, two hours eh. And then the other video is another one hour, almost two hours you got lagi. For part two. Okay. So you have to bear with me and go through all the videos just for topic number two alone. So, uh, so kat sini I explain the same ratios. Oh, can see kan my screen sekarang ni. So the same question nampak ni. In details, macam ni nak kira sampai. I think all the ratios kot ada ERT ni. Better return over and so on lah. Okay, so you can look ataupun view the videos ni. Siapa yang tak, tak go through lagi, go to ataupun just search my name. Okay, subscribe if you want and you can see all the videos for all the topics. Ni from previous semester kan, so maknanya still relevant with you lah sebab there's no changes to the to the syllabus just yet. Okay, kalau untuk lepas tahun ataupun dua tahun, maybe dia tak relevant anymore because we change the syllabus maybe. Ataupun we change the topic, we change, yeah, we swap the topic and whatnot. But this is just new like, I don't know, seven months ago. So, maybe this is from previous semester. Eh? So, you can still use this as your reference. Okay, I ada sampai the very final topic. Okay, tapi tak payah tengok yang lain lah. Just follow our sequence. So, currently it's in topic number two. Okay, so please make use uh, the resources kat sini. And I discuss the very same top, apa, example here. You can review balik lah. And for this, today's punya session, I will record and I will share dalam my guru. For this, for our session, I, I put in our my guru lah. Okay, but for your further study, for the reference, you can go to my YouTube channel ni. Okay, and review lah videos. Basically, we have four hours of videos for this topic alone. Okay, so please make use. Okay, nak fast forward ke, it's up to you lah. Cari mana yang relevant kalau you nak, nak explore the details of it. Okay, so cuma untuk, yeah. yes, you need to seek approval for the selection of group because I don't want nanti kalau tak buat sendiri-sendiri, tiba-tiba your group buat the same thing with the other group because you do on your own. Both tak tahu each other kan. So, uh, first come first serve eh, so sub, you all the group eh, whatsapp group eh, tak join lagi lah whatsapp group tu. So, uh, the assignment tu baru release this week kot. So, you can find, try to find uh, your group members, go to the my guru punya portal tu, join, uh, join the whatsapp group and from there you can find potentially your group members. Okay, four in a group. Okay, go to my guru. Uh, masuk dalam WhatsApp group. Masing-masing. Uh, depending on your group, you're all group G kata kan. So, go into group G and then once you dah decide your group members and you decided on the companies, lock, lock macam jual barang tu eh. Uh, block ataupun reserve the companies. Okay, reserve the companies that you want. So first come first. Eh? So if the, the first group dah choose 
a certain industry, please choose another industry. I just showed you earlier eh, how to choose the sub sector that you use that one to determine. Okay, identify the company that you pilih, identify the sub category tu, ataupun the sub uh, sector tu as your as your selection lah. It can be like I said tadi lah. It can be retailers. It can be uh, apa tadi ya? pharmaceuticals and whatnot. Just specify kat situ so that other members tahu you already use that subsector. Okay, remember eh, first come first serve. You cannot choose whichever groups dah pilih. If they selected certain industry, you need to move on and choose another. Okay, I think that's about it for today. Uh, sorry, take slightly longer times. Uh, any questions? Selain daripada question from the chat ni, I already answered both. Eh? Need approval, yes. And please find your group members because the instruction just released today at, 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 at on this week. Okay, so yang baru join this group, Shanim, contohnya. You're not too late, walaupun we are in topic number two. Eh? Uh, you need to find potential members. So if there's any issues with regards to uh, group, okay, just let me know. You have my numbers. You can text me. I already shared with you my numbers last week. Eh? So kalau tak, tak join lagi ataupun tak tengok, again go to my guru, look for our first video. Okay, there I shared my contacts, everything kat situ. Okay, go to the videos and look for the information kat situ. Okay, so again, thank you very much. Okay, and I don't know, inshallah, I'll see you guys next week. All right, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.